In this video we're going to take the magic beans model that we created in a previous session. We're going to look at creating all sorts of toolpaths to cut the part on a CNC machine. So let's go to file, close. So let's go and open an existing file. Now from the magic beans project folder, I'd like to open magic bean model.crv3d, press open and we'll see where we've left off from. So we've got our complete model. Now before I go ahead and create any toolpaths, what I'd like to do is just create an extra vector. So I'm going to select the vector that represents the outline of our part. We're going to come over and offset selected vectors. And then I'm going to offset that outwards by 0.15 of an inch. And we're going to use that vector as our boundary for calculating the 3D roughing and 3D finishing toolpaths. And so that small offset of 0.15 is used as it's larger than the radius of the tool that I plan to use. And this will make sure that the tool can roll all the way down the outside of the part, as normally the software will stop the centre of the tool on the line which is okay for areas such as the recess and the dish but it means that I would have a problem around the edge of my part so a small offset of 0.15 uh, should do the job so we'll say offset close that and so now we're ready to go and create our toolpaths so I'm just going to tile my windows vertically so I can see both the 2D and the 3D view and I'm going to come over here and switch to the toolpaths tab. So that's going to minimise my drawing tab and it's opened up our toolpaths tab on the right hand side here. And the, th the most important thing that I need to do is go and set up my material before I create any toolpaths. So we're going to go to material setup, we're going to use the set option and then in here we've got the material setup form and we must alter the positions and parameters of all sorts of things within this form uh, according to our own setup. So we'll start at the top with our Z0. I'd like to set my Z0 off the top of our material block. The material thickness is 1 inch. Our XY position is currently set to the centre, which I genuinely like to set the design side of things to at the start. But for machining, I like to set the XY position to be in the lower left hand corner. And now there's no right or wrong option for this, it's just whatever works for your own setup. And we can see that that's indicated uh, by this red square in the 2D view. And so now everything will be set from this corner here and all of the XY coordinates will be positive. So the next area in the form is the model position in material. And what I'd like to have is a zero gap above the model. So I want to push the model uh, all the way to the top of the material block, assuming that we're working uh, with a pre-finished flat material uh, that we can come in and machine the part without having to machine in uh, this flat area with a toolpath here. Okay, and then we check our rapid Z gaps above the material and our home and start position and just make sure that they're safe values for what we're doing. And then I can go in and press OK. Now, if you plan to actually machine the example shown in the tutorial, then it's very important that you calculate all toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling that you have available, and the material that you are using. So the first toolpath I'd like to create is a profile toolpath in order for me to cut out these vectors here that represent our hanging holes in order for us to hang our sign. So for this vector here, I'm going to hold down shift and select this vector here and then we're going to come over to the toolpath operations and use the option to create a profile toolpath. So in here we're just going to work our way down the form, altering some settings according to how we want to cut the part. So for the start depth we're going to make that at zero. The cut depth we want to cut all the way through the part, we know that our material thickness is one inch, so we'll set the cut depth of that to be one inch also. Then we move on to the tool section. To select a tool we can go and use this option to select here. That's going to open up your tool database. So in here I'm going to select the quarter inch end mill there. You can see we've got some tool information and various parameters and feeds and speeds in here. I'm just going to go to the default settings and press OK there. And now if I wanted to I could come in and edit the tool settings for this particular toolpath only by pressing uh, this edit option here. 
If I change them in the tool database itself, then they'll be permanently edited. So I'm just making temporary changes just to apply to this toolpath alone. What I'd like to do is alter the pass depth of this toolpath to be a quarter of an inch. Uh, we just have to know that this is appropriate for the material that I'm using. Then I'm going to press OK. We can see that that's going to cut that in four passes. Then we can select how we machine uh, the vectors. Do we do that outside, inside or on those vectors? As we're cutting uh, holes, I'd like to machine inside of those vectors that we've got selected. And then we can come down here. I'm just going to rename my toolpath. I'm just going to call this Profile Holes. That way I know that that's for the holes. We can press Calculate. And we can see in the 3D view that we've got our toolpaths represented by these blue lines here. Okay, and what we can do then is go ahead and preview that toolpath by using this option here, Preview Selected Toolpath, and that's just going to simulate how that's going to cut on the machine. We can see it's created those holes. If you look over here, it tells you that you can double click on the waste areas in the 3D view to remove them. So I'm just going to go over into the 3D view, double click here, double click here, and we can see we've got our hanging holes there. So if we put that back in Z and then close that form, we're now ready to create our second toolpath, which is the 3D roofing toolpath. So we're going to come into the 2D view and select all the vectors that I need in order for me to create my 3D roofing pass. So I'm going to select this vector that we offset earlier, hold down shift and select this vector here. Still holding down shift, I'm going to select this circle this vector here and then the inner circle here and what we're going to do is machine between these two vectors that represent our border here we're going to machine between these two vectors that represent our recessed shape um, in here and then we're going to machine inside of this vector in the middle that represents our dished area and this is so that we're only cutting the areas that we need to with our 3D toolpaths. So with all of those vectors selected, let's go over and create our 3D roofing toolpath. So the first thing we need to do is select our tool. I'm happy to use a quarter inch end mill. If I wanted to, I could just go into edit just to check some of the settings and parameters. I'm happy with those, so I'm going to press OK. If we move down, we can go to the machining limit boundary. For this, I'd like to limit my boundary to the selected vectors that I've got selected in the 2D view. Boundary offset, we're going to set that to zero as we did our offset using this vector uh, that we created earlier and we don't want to offset the vectors for these internal areas here as they're negative shapes. So we must make sure that there is no offset for those. So the next section is the machine and allowance uh, and this is where you can apply a skin of material to leave on the surface after the 3D roughing toolpath has uh, finished and this makes sure that we have some kind of material left for the finishing toolpath to cut and it keeps the tool away from the finished surface to make sure that it doesn't chip it. So what we'll do is we'll put in a small value of 0 0.03 and that should help that there. We'll move down into the roofing strategy. For this we're just going to go with the Z level raster X and then we'll profile uh, make that last there. We'll call that 3D roofing and then we'll press calculate. That's just going to work that out for us so we can see all of those toolpaths represented by those blue lines in here. And then we can go ahead and preview that toolpath. If we wanted to we can maximize the 3D view and just take a look at that there. Okay, so I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to close that and then we can uh, tile our windows again by pressing page up on the keyboard. We'll just put that back in C and now we're ready to go and create our finishing toolpath. So with those vectors still selected, let's go over and run our 3D finishing toolpath. So for this I'd like to use an 8th inch ball nose, I can see that's already selected so I'm just going to go into edit to check the uh, values that are in here. Okay, so I'm just going to alter the feed rate in here, make that 100 and the plunge rate 30. So we're just overwriting the values if we think that we can cut the material a little faster than the default settings. So I'm going to press OK here. Okay, again we're going to use the selected vectors 
uh, no boundary offset here and we can look at the area machine strategy and given the shape of the job it would be better for us to use this offset strategy as that will follow our boundary vectors and offset using the step over value in order to create the toolpath and because we have a well defined border area and with the circles in the middle I think that will give me a good finish so I'm going to go and call that 3D finish we'll press calculate and it's just going to take a few moments just to work that out. There's a lot of detail in there uh, for the software to comprehend at the moment. Okay, we can see it's done that there. So let's just preview that toolpath. We can see how that's working. Then we've got our finished, uh, our 3D finish there. So we just maximise the 3D view and take a look at that. So at this stage. If you find that there's anything that doesn't look correct, then it would be a good idea to go back and alter the settings until you're happy with the preview that you've got in here. Okay, so I'm just going to close that, and then we'll tile our windows by pressing page up on the keyboard. Just put that back in Z. So the next toolpath I'd like to create is a vCarl for our Magic Beans text. So I'm going to select the Magic Beans text. I'm going to go into the vCarl toolpath. In here we're going to put a start depth of zero as we know the top of our model is at zero. And then we can go and select a tool. So I'm going to use the select option in here. What I'd like to use is a 120 degree V-bit. This is a specialist sign making tool. So if we go to our V-bits, we can see in there we don't currently have a 120 degree V-bit. So what we have to do is uh, create a new tool. Okay, so the easy way to do this is I'm just going to select the 90 degree uh, 1.25 V bit here and I'm going to copy that and then what I need to do here is edit uh, the values in here to make the new tool. So I'm going to put in 120 degree 1.25 V bit in there and we've got the diameter still 1.25 but I must remember to change the angle. Okay, so I'm going to put 120 in there OK, so let's just go and apply that. We can see that we've got an error message here telling us that the pass depth of half an inch is greater than the tool maximum cutting depth. Maximum pass depth for the tool is 0.361 inches. And so that angle and that width, the maximum depth of cut for this tool on a single pass is 0.361 of an inch. OK, so we'll just OK that. And we're just going to edit that pass depth and make that 0.3. OK, so if we apply that, we can see we've got no error message there. And I can edit anything else if I wanted to, but I'm happy with these settings. We'll just do one final check, and then we can press OK. And then we can go and calculate that. I'll just change the name of that to just VCarve. We'll say Calculate, and then let's preview that toolpath. We can see that there. OK, so I'm happy with that. Let's put that back in Z. We'll close that down. So now we're ready to go and create our last toolpath, which is the Profile Cutout Toolpath. So this enables us to cut the part out of our material block. So I'm going to go into the 2D view, I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to select the vector that represents the boundary of our model, which is this one here. And I'll press F to fit that back. And with that selected, let's go over to the Toolpath Operations and we're going to select the Profile Toolpath. Okay, so in here we're going to give that a start depth of zero a cut depth of 1 inch so it cuts all the way through the material. The tool I'd like to use is a quarter inch end mill. We can see that we already have that selected. So I'm just going to use the edit option and just check over some of the parameters and values that are in here. I'm happy with those so I'll just press OK. We can see that that's doing that in four passes. For the uh, To machine the vectors, I'd like to machine outside of the vector that we've got selected here. And then we can come down to the bottom of the form. If we wanted to, we could add tabs, leads, or ramps. But in this example, I'm not going to do any of those. So I'm just going to call that profile. We'll press calculate here. Okay, and then we can preview that toolpath. We can maximize the 3D view, maybe put that in ISO view. And then if I double click on the waste material, we can see we've got our finished part. And so if at this stage you're not happy with the toolpath preview, it would be a good idea to go back and edit the individual toolpaths until you're happy with what you can see in this preview. OK, so now we're ready to go and output the data and send that over to our CNC machine. 
So I'm going to close this preview toolpath form. I'm going to select the profile holes. I'm going to use this option to save toolpath. Okay, so you must make sure that the right toolpath is listed here. You can see that there, profile holes. And then we must make sure that we have the correct post processor selected for my machine or control software. And you should only need to set this up once in the program. In order to do that, you just use this drop down box. And you can see there's lots of different post processors in there. And then you'd find the appropriate one for your setup. Okay, so we'll just go and save this toolpath. We'll say save toolpath. And then in here, we can name that. It's good practice to actually name the toolpath with the tool that you're using. So we're just going to call that profile holes. 0.25 EM, so I know that that's an N mil in there. Then we'll just save that out and would we'll repeat the same process for the rest of these different toolpaths. So let's just go and close that form down. And so we've seen how easy it is to create all sorts of toolpaths in the software. And with the help of the toolpath preview, we can confidently save out the toolpaths and go and cut the part on our CNC machine. So at this stage, it would be a good idea to save the file. So let's just go to File, Save As, then in the Project folder, we're just going to call that Toolpath, then Save That, and then you can access that from your Project folder.